Greetings, y'all. It's your knock, Peter Mata, and welcome back to another Golf Stories podcast. I'm, of course, joined here by PJ Tour caddy, Daryl Adden. Daryl, you're alive, man. A little it's, COVID scare last oh, week. Oh, it's, 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 it's great to be back. Uh, being in bed for the, all those days was not very fun. It, it, it's tough because we never really missed episodes. And yeah. to miss episodes, it's just for me, because, again, we were going strong. Yeah. And I I never would have guessed that we would miss because of sickness. Yeah. Like that never yeah. crossed my mind. It was more of a scheduling conflict, um, whatever it may be. And it and it wasn't. And ultimately, like that's a good excuse, even though I don't like using it as as an excuse, but it's a good excuse for us to not get it done. But we are here, we're gonna get after it and we're gonna get everybody all caught up. Yeah, lots to cover anyway, and yeah, I hope you're feeling good. COVID is no joke. I mean, it's it sucks honestly, but we, we're here to talk about, it and we're here to, you know, you know, to we survived it. I, I had yeah. it before you, and you know, still even feeling some of it. So, be safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but lots have transpired since uh, we last talked. Of course, you can see my background: the Area Three One Three, the Rocket Mortgage, was it Classic or Challenge Classic? Yeah, uh, in Detroit. Uh, Tony Finau, back to back. What's up with that, Daryl? It's just, again, I think we all knew that Tony was going to be a superstar. The mm-hmm. crazy part is, is I remember when I was in my younger years, my home golf course, not my home golf course. I was, it's not, it wasn't my home golf course, but I practiced there a lot. Mm-hmm. There was basically only two courses in town. Yeah. And so the other course held first stage of Q school. And okay. I followed Tony Finau way back oh. when for 18 holes at wow. the golf course, San Juan Oaks in Hollister, California. Um, I ended up, that was my first like real caddy gig mm-hmm. was caddying first stage of Q school. That's kind of what's a little bit started the, my love. But anyways, Dang. I wanted to see it because you knew he was a long hitter back then. And yeah. so I wanted to see how the course played where he hit it from. Mm. You know, cause you know, you play that course a decent amount and you're like, wow, he's hitting it. He hit it past the hundred <laughs> marker. Like, you know, so certain mm-hmm. holes that are into the wind and stuff like that. So for me, I've always known Tony was going to be a superstar. Like I said, from first stage, uh, here in my hometown. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of, it definitely was a slow transition from his first win of the Puerto Rico right. to now. But again, the floodgate just open. He's more comfortable. And again, he's becoming the player that he ultimately wants to be and what we know he can be. Right. It's, it's so satisfying. One of the things in sports, seeing a guy with that talent in any sport actually like produce now and, and do what he's supposed to do. And yeah, we all knew even we see, they got those videos of him and his young, his younger brother just swinging out their shoes and they were, they were ballers even then. And you knew that, you know, if they could just learn how to challenge, uh, you know, challenge it and, uh, you know, it's funny seeing this swing back then because it was like long and fluid and it was nice. Like, it, yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with it. But, you know, to tighten it up and, you know, do it in the fashion he's done the past two weeks there uh, is just awesome. He won by five over a plethora of different guys. Cameron Young, a guy that you didn't pick, but you didn't mention uh, any comments on that. I mean, Cameron Young is just a superstar in the making. I think, you know, if, if you know, funny aside or whatever aside i think he's mm-hmm. he's very dustin johnson-esque mm. um you know with with dustin johnson at on the live tour now we might not see him mm. on the pga tour for a while or ever mm. Mm. i think he's filling that role yeah uh, i think he's that type of player so for me uh definitely fun to see and again if i was going to watch a golf tournament honestly mm-hmm. like one of the guys that i would love to go watch is dustin johnson mm-hmm. and so if you can't get that right now in a PGA tour of it, you go to Cameron Young right now. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely, you know, up and coming rising star and cool to see. Love his swing. Love that little pause. Kind of. Oh, like it's, the, uh, and and it's powerful. Just whips it's it right powerful. through. Yeah. And uh, I feel his frustration. I know he's talked about it, you know, just coming up short so many times, but you know, just keep it added. You're putting yourself there. It means you're good enough. Just finishing. Finishing is the yeah. big key. Uh, Taylor Pender, shout out to him. Great. Uh, tournament there you know really solidifying his season you know he, he had that pause was at 14 weeks or something because yeah, however long it was yeah he was off for a while that's yeah. very impressive to to you know keep that confidence in yourself 
uh, and ultimately keep your card in your first year on tour. He's another long bummer. Yeah. That dude can whip it. And Patrick Cantlay, Mr. Mr. Solid, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? 21 under. But again, Tony Finau finishing it off, man. It's just, it's so satisfying to see. Of course, I, I love seeing it, Mr. 3000. You know, I, I saw I mean, spots. That's, that's your moneymaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't predict it this time. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe soon, maybe in these picks, maybe another uh, few weeks here. Uh, but yeah, that was the the Rocket Mortgage. Any any last thoughts? Area three one three. Love that golf course. Old school, always in good shape. Um, I was actually there. I was actually there for a couple days, thinking mm-hmm. my guy would get in, and I ended up flying home. And he ended up getting in, and he ended up going back there and mm-hmm. and playing the event. So um, you know, he yeah. So definitely w- would have loved to. Would have loved to tee it up and experience, you know, three one three. Like I said, a good golf tournament and um, very scorable if you're, you know, hitting fairways yeah. and stuff like that. They ripped it apart, man. Twenty six under, twenty unders for the other guys. I mean, can't be that easy, huh? I don't know, no. but uh, apparently, uh, it's just easy on tour because this next stop they tore up to the Wyndham Championship. We didn't get to talk too much about it, obviously, because uh, we missed last week, but. Obviously, you see Club Wyndham. They got Club 54 and Live. They got Club Wyndham on the yep, PJ that's that, Tour. That's that par five. <laughs> yeah, with the little beach uh, on the 15th hole. Uh, really cool what they do there. Uh, it's very distinct. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that course was at Sedgefield Country mm-hmm. Club. Uh, not the longest, uh, but very tight. And, you know, those greens are treacherous if you get on the wrong side of them. Um, what can you tell us about, uh, about Sedgefield and your experience there? Uh, I love it there. I, I mean, ultimately, like more often than not, it's hard to not love PGA Tour courses. That's why they're there. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes it takes a lot for them to pick courses, and they they do a good like again, the Wyndham Championship. They do a great job uh, for caddies. They do a uh, they do a uh, on one of the holes. I think it's hole number sixteen. I believe the par three. Yes, the par three. Okay. So somebody last year or two years ago, they do a contest for the caddies. If you um, get a hole in one, it's either like a million mm-hmm. points or some 10 million points, something of that like nature. At Wyndham. Like, so. At Wyndham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wyndham <laughs> points. And there was a caddy that made a hole in one and they got like a bazillion Wyndham <laughs> points. And, and also that, that week too, they encourage you to stay out of Wyndham property. And not only do they give us a discount, but uh, you put your room key in a raffle. You put your oh. name and put your room key in a raffle. And so I think it's either four or five room keys they pull out. And if they pull out your room key, they pay your room for the week. Oh, wow. No, so it's, 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 they do a good job there. So, I mean, for me, it was, it was tough to miss, um, but definitely love, love the Wyndham atmosphere and uh, good golf course too. Very mm-hmm. old school as well. Yeah. Uh, cool to see again good it's a it's a good it's a good place to finish the season yeah back to back uh donald ross designs here for yeah to hear again the tough part is is obviously if you're in that bubble it, it mm-hmm. definitely becomes a hectic week yeah uh, you're thinking so much and the crazy part is there you could be so close and you're in for 67 68 holes you're inside the number and mm-hmm. you know either you don't get it done or somebody behind you gets it done yeah so it's uh, definitely pressure pressure cooker that. Yeah, it's one of the cooler it. little uh, things to watch on the end of this tournament. I'm Chester yeah. Hadley last year, holding one, basically, uh, essentially one shot got him in. And, yeah. You know, Ricky Fowler this year, you know. Ricky Fowler this made year. made the cut, but, you know, hung on by this, the hair of his chinny chin chin. Yeah. Uh, so he's in. And I'm sure the PJ Tour is like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but – yeah, no, that's that's the really it's last regular season event. Pretty much, it's been since yeah the FedEx Cup started, so it's fifteen years. Uh, really nice course. Of course, I always remember Tiger contending here back in twenty. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. The one time he showed up here, and I don't know, it's it's a just a nice course, and you know, just cool vibes. And I didn't even know that behind the scenes stuff. So that's more kudos to them. I'd I'd, yeah. I'd like to I like hearing about that. Yeah. Um, as far as the actual tournament, uh, we got a little bit uh. Little Korean flavor up there, a little uh, Tom. There's a lot of them. Yeah, Tom Kim, Sanjay in coming second. Yeah, um, you know Jaha is uh, 
you know, Mer- a Korean, Korean, as well. Korean, um, a Korean American. And uh, yeah, man, that's a, uh, that was quite the, the finish by Tom Kim there. 61, 27 on the front nine. How about I, I it? Mean, it's this kid is very good at golf. Uh, he played the U S open this year. He's been, he played, I remember he played the PGA at Harding. Mm. Uh, this just, this kid just, he's young and he's up and coming. And what I really, really liked, and that shows me a lot about him is he made an eight on his first hole. Yeah. There. And I would say, I mean, I hate to say it, but I, in my opinion right now, I feel like 90% of guys would mail it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes really those small percentage of guys to really grind. And not only did he make the cut, but he won. Yeah. Like to make an eight, like it's that's for me, that's that's awesome. I, that's I love to see is. that. Dude, he won and he won by five. Dude, he yeah. went winning and away. that's the other part, right? What so it's <laughs> that goes to show, like for me, like even from a caddy perspective, like you just got to hang in there and just mm-hmm. it's hard. Yes, it's mm-hmm. hard, but you, you just got to hang in there. That's awesome, Moxie. Uh, great personality. I, I've watched some videos with him. Just cool. Obviously, his nickname, Tom, because he loves Thomas the Tank Tank right. when he was younger. So shout out to that. But yeah, I like his vibe. And you know what? I did some research, Daryl. He uh, kind of grew up a little bit in the Philippines, won some Filipino amateurs. And oh, nice. started on the, the Filipino tour to get his oh. uh, pro start. So, you know, hey, shout Whoa. out to that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he might be my one of my favorite new players you know he's yeah. young it's his 15th start too which is just ridiculous last week he just sewed up his pga tour uh temporary membership uh, side note side note yeah. uh adam one of our amazing guests mm-hmm. on this show absolutely um, picked him last week mm. and so i'm gonna give him some credit you know you he's go. he's uh he knows what he's doing that guy yeah he does he was a tempting pick uh I didn't think he would keep up the hot sheet because I was eyeing. I didn't. We didn't do the picks last week, obviously, but I was right, eyeing right. Him for some gambling picks, and I was like, you know, is he? He's playing good, but you know, is he tired? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, so, it's just it's he just kept going yeah, and going right. strong. I, I love about his game is that you know typically with Korean players they're they're very technically technical and you know that that is good, but also sometimes I guess that gets away from you. Uh, I like the t- change of speed in his swing and that yeah. he's able to control and do different shots. Uh, and his putting touch is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. looking like Tiger Woods out there and, you know, don't want to compare everyone to Tiger, but I mean, it, the ball is like rolling in very perfectly paced and everything like that. So, man, his future is bright. Uh, should we pick him again going forward? I don't know. Keep the hot hand fallacy. You going. do you. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but let's see. John Ho finished second with Sanjay M. Um, any last thoughts on the, on the uh, Wyndham? Anything like that? It's just crazy how the year is basically over um, yeah. from from the season perspective. So uh, way to way to close that and uh, uh, new chapter. Let's see, let's see this playoffs. Playoffs. Talking about playoffs. Playoffs. Me? But before that, how about we talk a little live? liv baby a little live before before we because they're not allowed in the playoffs anyway because of yeah so, <laughs> the so yeah i definitely saw that today definitely the, saw that today. The, the little i think they were calling it like the live three or whatever i've seen <laughs> i've seen online the live trio so, yeah i mean so they had the week of detroit uh what i have to say is pat perez is making a lot of money on that <laughs> <laughs> the four aces again man what in the world I mean, what, how good is it to be on four aces right now? Yeah, man. It's they got to break up a- that conglomerate. It's just an ATM. Yeah. Uh, it was... It's, you know what? It is it's it is what it is right now. And um, I think let's just kind of see where it goes and how it, but whatever. Guys are doing their thing. And um, obviously to spark any controversy, I mean, I think I saw a quote i think cam percy like might have like spilled the beans oh yeah cam Smith might be going so yeah. that might get some controversy there on top of i think cam smith might have even said something back like I-, I have no comments or whatever yeah and, he didn't deny it basically but so like, right mm, so yeah. it's i think where that whole mess up is is cam percy shouldn't just yeah what are you doing dude like, even if, even if it is true yeah like i said let him handle his bit especially at a time like this yeah, but uh, sometimes people like to be the one to know, right, or be yeah. the one to say, you know, what, whatever. Yeah, good, like bad, ugly, 
good, bad, ugly. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, there's some names in the rumors mill. Uh, uh, Mark Leishman was actually one of the other ones. Yeah, yeah, one of the other players, guys he said, so. basically those two guys. And mm-hmm. so that changes up the dynamics yeah. of uh, President's Cup. Yeah, yeah. So do, do they live, I mean, do they leave right after the pre- uh, uh, FedEx what, Cup? or do Who they knows? Wait? That's I mean, what I'm saying. Like, who knows? Like, Or do they leave after the President's Cup? Because the President's Cup is basically after uh, the Napa event. Yeah. It's a, like and, it Napa, and there's like two live events in between that and the FedEx. Coach. Yeah, exactly. So, so I mean, <laughs> again, it's, it's, I will say this, I'm going to be as neutral as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been good from the caddy perspective because each tournament has, has been stepping up on their end. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been stepping up, doing things great for the players, even for the caddies. So in that limelight, it has been good. Mm-hmm. The other stuff I can't speak of, but at least from the treatment perspective, like Minnesota stepped it up like mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even the, the other event, like there was the week of John Deere, like John Deere stepped it up like crazy. So I think that's a good thing that, you know, tournaments on the PJ tour aren't getting complacent. They're also stepping up instead yeah. of just like bashing it or whatever their stance is. So in that light, from a caddy perspective, it's, it's been good. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's good, like, little backdoor things that you don't see, yeah. you know, that they don't mention on the media. But, yeah, man, it's getting juicy. Um, did you catch the event at Trump Bidmester? I, uh, I, I did not catch did not. it. It's <laughs> like, just, I it, it, it's hard because the streaming part of it, like, it's YouTube, YouTube, like, on YouTube, right? Yeah, and on their and then, website. Yeah, it's on their website. So, it's not as, like convenient compared to just turning on the tv and just you have to go seek it basically you got to go seek it so i think once they figure out some sort of tv deal and it's just standard like how it normally is like there's like a live tv or whatever i think that it makes that part easier yeah they didn't get charles barkley by the way for those who don't know they yeah i didn't didn't know that actually yeah uh yeah so charles barkley i guess i don't know if they offered him or not they didn't they didn't really say uh, but like he says he's going to stick with TNT. They of course got Faraday, uh, which I think for yeah. Charles, I think that's a good thing for him because I, yeah. I love him on TNT. Yeah, only because I love him on TNT, not because like I, not because he want to be good for Live, but yeah, because I think his role is TNT. I mean, it's t- that's like pop culture there. Him with Shaq and all yeah, that. it's great. It's just, great. Yeah, you know, so it that's tough to even leave. stay. It's worth staying up late for. Yeah, exactly. I, I try to watch them more than the actual game. The, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. <laughs> or you catch the last quarter, yeah. and then that's really like the show. Yeah. So that's that was interesting that he he said no. He was he was really chopping at the bit. He's like, offer me something. So I I don't know exactly what went down with that. Uh, they did get parody. He called it, and he was fine. I watched a little bit of it. Didn't watch the end. Uh, Stenson ended up winning, getting a little vengeance because he didn't yeah. get his captaincy. So that's kind of. Do you see on that part? It is. The Iceman. Um, yeah, so he played great. I saw some of the highlights. Matthew Wolf, shout out to him. He also played, actually, you know, he's to his, to his capabilities, you know. So that that's it's good to see. Maybe that's the type of environment that he's he needs, you know, some players need. So kudos to him. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought just interesting. They're making a lot of noise, uh, bringing in guys like Nelly and the Chainsmokers to perform. Oh, I'll. I mean, they definitely do the, that side stuff amazing. And, yeah. you know, it's again, a party I'm, environment. Yeah, you know? it, they, they definitely do that part. Amazing. I think that that part of it's great. And it's definitely good to get the younger viewers. I mean, uh, no doubt. And it, I think they're be- doing better than the PGA Tour. I will say that, you know, turning it on, uh, <laughs> you get so like, oh, yeah, it's going to be different. But then the golf is kind of the same. So they're going to have to improve that, in my opinion. I, I, of course, I've mentioned that to them straight you know, to a person that works for Live. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what else they got up their sleeve. Um, but yeah, lots of celebrities there and such. Lots of craziness going on with that. Uh, I think it is time for us to step through those uh, doors uh, of the FedEx Cup playoffs. And we're going to go first to the St. Jude, FedEx St. Jude Classic, our championship now, I think it is now. Um, yeah, at TBC South Wind, uh, Daryl, you were just telling me is actually never I've been never there. I've never been there. I've never That's been crazy. there. 
it, it, it actually is crazy. I'm, I'm not, I guess I haven't been around long enough. <laughs> and, and, and again, that, that event, I've heard great things about it. Like everybody talks about how good the golf course is and just, just never been there. So, uh, you know, I'm free, I'm free this week. So, uh, <laughs> definitely we'll be watching more golf than, um, I'm used to. I even actually, I, I, I officially cut the cord oh, and, uh, I'm streaming, uh, mm. you know, full YouTube TV. Here we go. Hey, here we go. So, wow. uh, finally after all these years of talking about, I was going to do it finally d- did it. So yeah, um, there you go, dude. I've had it for less than a week now and it's been good so far. So I don't know what you do. Yeah. I don't I know. Do, what you I do, do YouTube TV. Yeah. And yeah. I watch it all around wherever I'm at. With my yeah. Phone so or it's, I mean, <laughs> I'm mad at myself cause I've been talking about it for a Forever. while now yeah. and it's just hard to be on, you know, you're so comfortable doing things one way yeah. and change is different. So uh, with YouTube TV, I definitely love it. Yeah, good deal. I remember yeah. real quick. I remember they they were talking about canceling Golf Channel there. What on oh YouTube TV? I thought, or was it I ESPN or something? I hope not. Not anymore. Not anymore. There was okay. there was a there like a couple months ago. They were talking about like cutting some station. They cut some station for a little bit, but then came and then they brought it back. Right? NBC, like NBC. Yeah, all the NBC things. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, which included a golf channel, and yeah, that was a scary time. We were about to cut. I was like, do we cut it? And then we heard they're coming back. So thank goodness. Yeah. Like that's a big cog for YouTube TV. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, so you will be catching it at uh, the the FedEx Cup playoffs here on YouTube TV, uh, as will I. Uh, this tournament's been combined basically. So technically, the Tony Finau is the defending champ. This is the Technically, the tournament I won Mr. 3000 on. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it, of course, affects St. Jude Classic, uh, which was the WDC or whatever. Uh, they combined the two. Or actually, and that one was combined with the Bridgestone one. So it's just, it's a whole sorts of mess. It, it uh, is a mess. Either way, it, it is at TPC Southwind, which is par 70, par 70, 7,200 yards. I, it doesn't look long, but. Uh, there is a lot of water. I'll say that. And of course, there's the 18th hole behind me where Robert Garrigus famously got a, a little John Vanderbilt on uh, way yeah. back in. So uh, what do you know? I know you haven't been there, but what do you know about uh, TPC Southwind? I mean, it's always been a ball strikers golf course from, mm-hmm. you know, what, what I remember. I remember Lee Westwood would always play that event Yeah. because um, it was always prior to the U.S. Open, wherever it would be. So I remember as a kid, you'd always be like, man, I like Lee Westwood this year. So you'd always like to see him, see how he's trending the mm-hmm. week before the U.S. Open. Yeah. And so that that is one thing that does stand out of this golf course is you always knew it was before the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you got to see the guys that like to play before. You know, there's guys like Tiger that don't. Mm-hmm. Um, Rory was kind of in that category of not yeah. playing before U.S. Open. But you had the guys like Adam Scott, Phil. you know, played, played Phil, played, I think. I, I, I don't know if uh was ricky a guy that played before i mean i feel like he was hit or miss yeah he was hit or miss i know dustin yeah. like one year before yeah dustin, open yeah time, and so um it was cool to see the guys that like to trend into u.s opens yeah yeah and i don't know, for wherever this event because i guess it's in the south it's in memphis i whenever i hear about it i just think it's just like burning ass hot there. oh it's, it's the hottest they say it's the hottest tournament of the year I, I bet it is and now that it is it's been in august i mean i bet it's just absolutely brutal yeah it, it's the it's the um i mean i have a couple caddy friends that on their instagrams are like tell me you're in memphis without telling me you're <laughs> like that hole or whatever basically so it's, and it's all of it is referencing the heat yeah this basically looks like you jumped into that pond over there yeah <laughs> uh yeah no it's uh Ball striker paradise, I would say, just being consistent because there is so much water and you have to be, you know, you're going to hit some balls in the water this week. Uh, you have to be consistent with it and just keep going and keep playing. And yeah, I like the course. It generally brings a lot of drama, especially that last hole. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I remember Dustin Johnson even holding a shot, you know, for the win basically uh, here. So lots of interesting history at this course. Uh, Daryl, I think it's time to do the picks. You're finally back into it. <laughs> I know. Let's do it. But I'll let you. I'll let you start off and and, and kind of ease me in there. 
Okay. So Dark Horse first. Um, man, one thing, because this is a playoff event, you know everyone's had a decent season coming in. You know, right. That's that. Uh, so, which actually, you know, note to the people out there, if you're betting people, there's actually a great time to bet because, you know, everyone's probably capable of winning. So, um, tough choices, a lot of good players. So, I was thinking, like, what what's my strategy this week for picks? It's in the South. It's, you know, Bermuda. It, it's hot. It's a tough course with lots of water. Who's going to be able to play on that type of – so, I look back. I was like, mm-hmm. Maybe this guy, maybe that guy. I'm going to say Kurt Kitayama is a dark horse pick. Mm, Played well at Honda. Yeah. yeah. At Honda with that Bermuda in the, in the south. Tough course, lots of water. Uh, and he's just had a solid season with lots of high finishes. He's actually, what is this, 22, plus 22,500. So it was like 225 to 1. So they're not giving him much of a chance, but I like him as my dark horse pick. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> he, you know what? You know what? Honestly, we we're talking about it a couple of weeks ago. Me and a couple of buddies, like, mm-hmm. you would never notice, but his season's actually really good. Yeah. Like you'd never know that. Like as like an average golf fan would never know that unless you were like really like diving deep. Like he's mm-hmm. had. I think. I mean, I, he three chances he right to now, really win it. You know, he's he's is he in the top 50? He is in the top 50, I think. I think something like that. But yeah, three real chances to win it. And he finished it. He didn't like collapse or finish. Yeah. Yeah. Like he he's he's I remember a quick note with the Honda thing. He was on the same flight that I was from Honda to Puerto Rico. (laughs) It was kind of it was just kind of funny. I was like, whoa, this dude was just contending. (laughs) This dude was just contending. And he's and I think he was literally in front. of. I didn't say anything. He had his we don't know each other. Yeah. Uh, he had his uh, headphones in and he was like, we're flying Southwest of Puerto Rico. He, I think I was like a 20 and he was like a 19. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was just, it, again, it was just like a crazy coincidence. Like, Who's this guy? Um, all right. So for my dark horse, um, I'm not going into crazy depth like that. <laughs> uh, that's Give it to uh, me. I'm barely, I'm barely alive. I mean, <laughs> I'm barely alive, so who needs thinking? You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm on the, I'm gonna ride the hot hand. Okay. And uh, similar, he's my guy is two fifty, two hundred fifty to one. Cool. And I'm riding the hot hand. I'm gonna go John Huh. Oh, okay. You know, I'm gonna go John Huh as my dark horse. I'm gonna ride the. I, I'm again. It hit. It hit when I didn't expect it to hit. The yeah. hot hand of like Tony Finau back to back. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I love guys going in hot. What even if they didn't win? Yeah. John Hud did not win, but he's he's riding hot into mm-hmm. uh this tournament. So I'm going uh John Huh for okay. my All right. JT Poston, travelers to the John Deere. He, yeah. Hot hand. I mean yeah. Tom I'm, Kim has been hot. I'm, so. I'm you have your little window. I think it's yeah. two to three weeks. So yeah. I'm trying to hit this window. I, I feel you. I I was I was kind of feeling if we had picks last week, I was kind of feeling Taylor Pendereth because he right. played pretty solid. But hey, I I don't mind it. John has been playing solid this year. You know, he kind of vanished there for years, but then you know here he is having a solid season. Go. He's so, coming. He's like I think sixtieth or something. So you know, hey, it's not out of the realm. It's crazy. He's two fifty, two fifty to one. But hey, I mean, I guess you got a lot of quality players in this field. Um, but uh, going to our contenders pick. Uh, I like again. It's a southern course, Bermuda. I, I'm not gonna overthink this one for my you know final two picks. But this contender pick, seventy five to one. Guy's been hot all year. Rookie Davis Riley. Oh, Hate right. to say it, Alabama dude, but he's he's due to win, man. I'm just gonna keep going that down that train, and I think there's a good spot for him. Love it, love it, love it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And again, if you don't follow along, he's had an elite season. Uh, elite season. Any other year, he'd probably be rookie of the year. But I oh. mean, there's like five other guys now. <laughs> elite, <laughs> elite season. I mean, um, uh, you forget Cam Young's a rookie. <laughs> so eat the gala. Friggin' Tom uh, Kim might come up and get. I, it, I mean, win one of these or whatever, and yeah. see you later. Yeah. So I love it. I love yeah. it. I'm I'm going with a guy that's sixty five to one. I'm gonna go back into the mm. well. Ball striking Jesse. I'm. 
I need a hit. I need a hit. I need a hit. Uh, I'm going with the Canadian's finest, Corey Connors. Me likey. Yeah. Me likey, Daryl. I, I was eyeing him as well. I'm glad he's in our bucket. We've been saying that like he's been striking it awesome lately and just hasn't put it all together. And this is a course where you strike it well, you're going to be there. So just make you're a few more putts, there. Corey. That's all you need. Let's let's do this thing. Come on, man. Let's let's, like let's get me through. Get me through the finish line. Oh, Canada. You know? Yes. Come on now. Get it. Get another win. He deserves. He's a guy that definitely deserves kind of another like Tony Fino. We talking about guys. Who right. Right. He's in that realm. He he's needs another realm. win. You know, he, he's certainly talented enough. Um, Like it. Like it for my winner pick. Again, not going to overthink it. Guy who contended here last year. It's a homer pick. It's LSU Tigers, Sam Burns. I mean, oh. 22 to one. N- not even going to lie. I was definitely looking at that. I, it's <laughs> I, it's still hard not to. Bermuda Southern Course uh, contended ball striking, here. Before, like, yeah, talk you know. to me. Let's go. Like, what are, what are we even talking about here? Like, All right, oh, no. right. So, Sam Burns, it's, I, I hope I'm right. You know, <laughs> prove me right, buddy. <laughs> well, it's so hard for me to pick. Mm. It's so hard for me to pick. A lot of good I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb. He's been a little bit quiet. He's, he's still, he's still an elite when it, when it comes to ball striking, I'm going to go with Colin Morikawa. Oh, 25 to one. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I think he's been a little quiet. Very quiet. Again, yeah. Ball striker. Uh, definitely taking Colin Morikawa. I think it's <laughs> his time to kind of shine and, Show him like, hey, you guys forgot about me. I'm still here, guys. Yeah, for sure. And this used to be a WDC. This used to it's now an elevated FedEx Cup. It's he wins right, on right. big time events. So he wins on big time events. So, so I mean, hey. might as well start it off right yeah, now. Get it going. Hasn't won this season. Crazy yeah. enough, man. Like we, he's been very quiet. You know, just hasn't his ball tracking's been a little off. His putting hasn't been quite right. You know, the resume still speaks for itself. He's still a stud, you know? Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, don't know his record here, but we'll see. I think there's a kind of course that actually would fit him. So we shall see, man. I, I like our picks uh, as uh, as always. I don't know. Maybe taking a week off and just being away and just hectic schedule. Maybe maybe it'll help us. Maybe we'll, we'll get a, a little, little refresher. Yeah, we'll go on a Tony Finau streak. Speaking yeah. of, we didn't we didn't pick Fino. I, I don't like him here. I, I do like him maybe in the the next one, but I don't like him here because bad track record. Doesn't normally play well in in like the the South uh, region, which is kind of interesting. I guess Bermuda. Maybe he's not his friend. I don't know. But uh, and our our Tom Kim not going to ride the hot hand there either. But just shout out to both of them, uh, winners winners. Um, any stories about uh, Memphis or maybe even the first event of the FedEx Cup playoffs, your experience with that, anything like that? Um, the fr- I mean, I've been to the I've been to that Liberty National one. Ooh, that one's a very, nice. very cool event. Uh, the other one that I went to was uh, the year that Dustin. I, I don't know if they were in a playoff. Was it Dustin and Jordan? Oh like yeah, yeah. Was that were they in a playoff or they, they were? were they were. I don't know what course that was. It was that was in New York. It was. York. Uh, was it Ridgewood? Is that no? Ridgewood? It's not Ridgewood. It's they only used it one time. Let me see. Here we they, go. they don't go back to it. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Glen Oaks. Yeah, um, Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. It, it was actually a really good track, and um, just again riding riding the hot hand when I was there, and um. Yeah, definitely fun little event. Yeah. So um, no, it's 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 it, it's an exciting time. It's it's definitely changed because memory playoffs used to be four weeks, mm-hmm. uh, four events. So it, it it's it's tougher yeah. because now back then it was one twenty five. Then the next event goes to a hundred, mm-hmm. and then hundred to seventy. Yeah. And uh, seventy to thirty. Now, now it just goes from one twenty five to seventy. 55 so, players there. You, you 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 golf your ball and then yeah. the 70 there's no cut so yeah. you need to really just grind out four days yeah you get some you get your little live type of package yeah you, get, you, you know so so you you know if you don't if you don't start off hot it's not the end of the world because you yeah. have four days yeah there, so, and it's a comfortable uh, feeling let me tell you it, it's a great feeling it's yeah. a great feeling because you can just kind of marathon your way and mm-hmm. not really you know play the two days and worry about just, anything yeah just yeah like, 
Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no playoffs is an exciting time. Obviously the better you play, uh, the, the better you can move up and try to get to the, the top 30, you know, East Lake, East Lake. <laughs> and, and that's, and that's the thing where the PGA tour still has an up on the live, right. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the tough part is, is like on the live, you have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was reading, reading a couple of things from some quotes. People, players were saying like, the right in a sense of like, Hey, you get to, you know, tour championship, you're in all the majors on all mm-hmm. the WGCs. Like it's amazing to be all that. So at least there's goals to get to. Yeah. Right. And the live definitely doesn't have that now. They might have it in the future, yeah. but right now it's, it's tough because it's, it's new and it's transitioning, but that's the thing where it's, 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 it's nice to be on the PGA tour. Cause there's goals to there's structure. Or, yeah, there's structure. So it's, it's just tough with the new thing with live and, I don't know. We'll see how they handle that and how it goes forward. But it's interesting. Um, does does it feel elevated, or does there do they do anything special because it's a playoff event uh, during the week of? Not really. Not, not really. I think I think it's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty standard. I think um, it's just it just you as a player, caddy, know like, hey, this is a time to step up because the better you finish on these rankings is the better your priority, right? If you finish top 70, you're in all the invitationals. So those are big little perks to get in. And, and obviously like, even from like a contract perspective with sponsors, you know, I think Mm -hmm. their, their structure is like how they finish in FedEx cup. So obviously the better you do, um, the better you will be able to whatever bonuses or renewals it will be. So it's, it's, yeah, you you get a pat on the back for making the playoffs, but you still got work to do. Man, that's that's kind of interesting. That see, that's kind of where they could almost step up with live a little bit, like make it a little bit more like this is the playoffs, baby. Like this is right. this is this means something, you know? Right. So that's actually interesting, you know, hearing that. Um, but yeah, no, th- those are some great insights, Daryl. Uh, yeah, like I didn't insights. even know about the contract thing. So yeah. Because mm-hmm. mo- most contracts that I know about, unless you're really like superstar, yeah. they're typically year to year renewals. And it's incentive based, like in- incentive know. based. Because again, the the thing with 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 golf, which is great, is mm-hmm. you don't know if you're going to keep a card unless mm-hmm. you won. You know, then you know you have mm-hmm. two years exemption, or depending yeah. on what you win. So, a- a average player, it has to be a year by year basis because mm-hmm. you don't know if like I'm going to be on the PJ Tour next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, so, that, I love it. And, you know, with all this live stuff going on, I mean, I, I honestly just want both to succeed. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just want to see both. No, of them. like I said, from what I said so far, I think it's it's been healthy so far. Yeah. Um, maybe not in the higher uh, realms of it, but from like the lower realm yeah. of like me and like seeing how it's going on and like them mm-hmm. raising purses and uh, treating us better and doing a lot of incentives. Like that's been great. Yeah. You feel it. The little things go a long way, and you know that's good that they're stepping up a little bit. Um, anything else, Daryl? Before we close out, I mean, for for it's it's been a couple of weeks, but side side note, uh, you know, no more me and uh, G Murray. We we, right. we 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 parted ways, and so I'm a free agent and uh, still able to do this, which is great. So mm-hmm. uh, I'll be I'll be on the hunt, and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah. But until then, been playing a lot of golf and trying to not to get worse as as i say yeah man it, it's nice that uh it's things that y'all y'all parted ways um but you know it's nice that you've gone away a little bit and kind of decompressed and got some yeah golf it's, it's 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 part of the business that's that's yeah. that that's the thing in our, in our world uh it's part of the business and you know just kind of keep going Maybe reach out to Ricky Fowler's people. <laughs> I, I, I heard that. Trust me, I heard. There's, there's been a lot of shakeups. Will, Will Zalatoris. Yeah, yeah Will Zalatoris. Like Ricky. I mean, Will, Will Zalatoris was is already taken. So yeah. he was taken. He was taken. You know, right after that. So he's trying. He's trying to do that. Scotty Scheffler, man, trying to I get. Mean, that, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Trying to explode after you know change of caddy, but we'll see. Um, yeah, man. Uh, good talking to you again. As always, dude. Yeah. Great to be back. Trust me. Yes, great indeed. to be back. This was a great episode. Great talking. Uh, audience members, do what you do. If you don't feel shy, you know, let us know below what your thoughts, whatever it is. Uh, you know, make your picks on the playoffs and whatnot. 
uh, you know, like, subscribe, comment below. I know your words mean something to us.